On this episode of Doing the Most, we're gonna make a homemade cider press. Homemade brews and berry ciders, everything from meat to roast. Big creation, fermentation, and ebriation, doing the most. Recently, a friend who lives up the road called and said that their tart cherry tree was full of cherries. So we went up the road and picked 15 pounds of tart cherries. After we pitted them, we decided we wanted to make both a mead and a jam from the cherries, separating the juice for the mead and the pulp for the jam. But then comes the conundrum we don't have a cider press to press the fruit with. So I got online and looked at some fruit presses and they are not cheap. I was seeing prices of 80 to $150, depending on the quantity that you wanted to press. And so I looked around the house and tried to see what I could repurpose. And I remembered that the same friend who has the cherry tree had given me this oak barrel. Now this oak barrel is used and I've tried it out. It was definitely spent when I received it, but that doesn't mean it's useless, right? So I took the barrel outside, popped the end of it off and drilled some holes in the bottom. I ran water through it and sure enough, it poured out beautifully. I went down in the basement and as a cheese maker, I had a cheese press. This cheese press is actually homemade also out of parts from the local hardware store, including the screw press, these screw posts, and a couple pieces of wood, nuts and washers. And with your cheese press, you will have a cheese mold, typically. This, uh, this is a hard cheese mold and the mold has a follower. The follower goes in, presses down the cheese, and then the whey comes out these holes at the bottom. So this follower is actually about the right diameter for this barrel, which is about six inches. So with this concept in mind, I went down to the chef store and picked up a cake tin, and then went over to the hardware store and got this PVC 90 degree elbow. This elbow is threaded at the top, so you can put a threaded stopper in it. So I got the stopper too and some O-rings, and I used about a three quarter inch drill bit to bore out a hole and then a Dremel to fit the hole just perfectly for this PVC elbow. Put the stopper in, and then I was able to use that same Dremel to Dremel out the core of the stopper, basically creating a waterproof elbow that hooks in to the cake pan. So with my Franken press assembled, I was ready. I cold soaked and macerated the cherries with some pectic enzyme and some water for about a week. And I kept those just above freezing for about a week to really let that pectic enzyme do its thing. And then I drained off all of the liquid, put the cherries into a brewing bag and put in my follower and pressed. And after pressing it about halfway, I did have to, to put a spacer in there to give it a little bit more pressure to press it all the way, all the way down. But I actually ended up out of 15 pounds of cherries getting about a gallon of cherry juice in addition to that gallon of, of water that I had soaked the cherries in. And uh, it, it worked surprisingly well. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty proud of, of this little construction. I'm going to reinforce the base here on the bottom and then I've got some wood that I'm gonna cut to create additional spacers to go on top of my follower so I can get even more pressure on there because I, I feel like for things like apples or mulberries, things that I haven't cold macerated that I just wanna press, I'm gonna need a, quite a bit more pressure to, to push the follower down. But, you know, overall, I'm really happy with the construction. You're gonna see it in an upcoming video here in a month or two where I actually do the cherry mead. And it's actually a pretty cool project. I've got 10 pounds of honey and three and a half gallons of water. And then once that's done fermenting, I'm gonna rack it off onto the cherry juice that I pressed in this press. It should be a really robust and cherry forward mead. I hope this video helps some of you out there. I was looking for ways to repurpose things, you know, Googling around and couldn't find anything. And when I realized I had this oak barrel, it like dawned on me that this, this is the perfect vessel to, to create something like this. And like I said, it worked out as expected. So I'm, I'm pretty happy with the results. So I hope this helps somebody who's Googling out there thinking maybe I can convert my oak barrel into a fruit press. Yes, you can, and it's not super expensive. Like I said, the cheese press parts were about 35 bucks, and then for the rest of the stuff to convert it, it was another about $12. So I've got a cheese press and a fruit press all in one. Pretty cool, I think. And before I go, we wanna thank our over 500 subscribers on YouTube. 
Your support means the world to us. Thank you for commenting on our videos, sending us Instagram messages, and just letting us know what you think of the content. We really appreciate your support. As always, you can check out our website at doingthemost.org, which has been recently updated, and you can follow us on Instagram and Pinterest. So I wanna know, what do you think? Was this a good idea? Complete waste of time? Should I have just bought a fruit press online and not worried about all the hassle of this? Let me know in the comments. I'm curious what y'all think of this interesting little doing the most build. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.